You hear me? Perfect. Um, you know, uh, this week a little bit different week just because of the Tuesday we had off, but I like the, the way we practiced on Monday. Um, uh, Monday night, uh, Tuesday, we uh, uh, had a player day off, but Wednesday went back in, got w good work today. Uh, we actually had split stadium. We went crowd noise in the stadium uh, for our offense. Our defense actually came indoors, uh, worked through our special teams all together outside. Um, tomorrow we'll have a, a midday practice and get an opportunity to hop on a plane to go to Minnesota. Uh, injury wise, really, uh, everybody that played last week is uh, good to go. Haven't had any, any issues or setbacks. A couple of the guys were a little bit dinged up last week. Uh, are healthier than they've been. So we should be full, full go uh, for everybody in that regards. Um, you know, I, I think the weather and, and the, the, you know, as the weather begins to turn here in the, in the Big Ten country, right? Like the emphasis on playing physicality and, and uh, playing in a certain way. I know Minnesota has obviously established their mentality. At times we've been able to do that. So really excited to see where our crew shows up uh, this weekend, especially uh, on the road again. Uh, in, a, in a Big Ten game for four quarters. Um, so uh, really, other than that, I'll open up for questions. Hey, Coach, uh, I want to follow up on something you talked about Monday, the idea of November football being a big deal. You know, talk about, follow up on that, kind of what you were you uh, referring to specifically and how big of a goal is that for you here? You, you know, um, Probably it was something that was generated even, you know, before I became a coach. I remember uh, back in the uh, late 80s, early 90s when I played, uh, before there were championship games, coaches just, when we were in the hunt for our first Big Ten title, when I was a player, coaches talked about the games in November and the way that they meant, they mattered, right? And uh, you, you play the games in September, you uh, compete and build in October, but uh, championships are really defined in one in November. And that kind of just stayed in my my mind, even when I was an assistant coach, uh, when I was in a different conference, when I came back to this conference, there wasn't Big Ten championship games yet. So um, it really kind of, that's the foundation of it. And then explaining to our guys, right, we're a three and six football team, but we're playing the team that is in the lead in the Big Ten West. Um, they're six and two overall, four and one in November. And for them to get to the championship game, um, you know, that's, that's, I know something that I've heard and seen from their uh, publications that that uh, playing the football in the month of November is important and even though we're not probably competing for a Big Ten West title I want the mentality to be established now for our team when we are in that position they understand what I'm talking about um, you know the weather changes a little bit uh, uh, the preparation the ability to execute things is going to be affected uh, by the weather as you go down this stretch uh, I played in some uh, weather games against Minnesota uh, both at, at their place and at, and at uh, other institutions that I've been at where there's been snow on the ground. So it's a, it's a different culture. It's a different mind frame. And I want our players to know the difference in that. Thanks, Coach. Yep. Hey, Coach. It's, it's that time of year uh, where we start to see kids hit the portal. And I saw a comment from you this week that, you know, you're comb combing through that. Is there a particular profile you, you look for in a kid who's looking to, to find a new home? You know, um, it's a great question, and, and I think every case in that scenario is different, right? Like uh, kids hit the portal for a variety of different reasons. Since I've been here, we've taken grad transfers. We've taken multi-year transfers. We took one-year transfers. Um, uh, it, it really, I would say that the way that we've approached it is if someone uh, can come in and fill a, a role for us in a position of need, uh, that we maybe have A, younger players or players that we don't have a lot of depth, or in certain scenarios, because of the transition of the roster since I've come here, the way we play offensively, defensively, we've gone to a three down front, right? So I've already talked about the need for certain positions that uh, uh, hadn't existed. So really that's the only qualifying factor is if someone can come in and help us win a championship, but they also have to fit into the University of Illinois, right? So they have to fit an academic profile to get cleared before we can even make a scholarship offer or an opportunity to, to get a transfer player in here we got to check the box because academically Illinois and two other big 10 schools are uh, in a position that their rules to get in school here are completely different than any of the schools we compete against. Um, and, and that's a, a unique obstacle that we have to, uh, we just have to either, either deal with it or find a way to get through it, or we just can't recruit them, which commonly is a little bit of an issue because other schools in our conference can, but, and that's a process that we're working through within the university. Thank you, Coach. Yep.
Hey, Brett, you made mention of how PJ and you are very different, but it seems like you have a lot of respect for the way his program plays. Um, when you see that, like, obviously he's had time to build that up. Um, what do you see in his program that, that you'd like to, to build up in your program? You know, when I say that, um, I'm just, well, you guys get it, right? Like from a media standpoint, we're just kind of different uh, personalities, people. Uh, but I've known PJ a long time, have had great respect. Anybody that's worked with him have, have talked about uh, just the way he's committed to his beliefs, right? And his thoughts, um, you know, I, I uh, um, have witnessed that from afar, but it was interesting when I was with the Giants, we, were, we drafted a young man by the name of Carter Coughlin, who was a, 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 a player for me in his rookie season. And so I spent a lot of time with him on Zoom one-on-one, -on -one, um, getting to know him and then developing a relationship with him because I knew I was going to coach him and I didn't know if we were going to get a draft him. Then we draft him and I really get close with him, right? And, um, you know, it was, it was very apparent to me how much he believed and had faith in what he had been taught at Minnesota and, and, the, and the faith that he had in that. And he stood by it through and through, even though we we're, we're in an outside linebacker room. Now, this is a different time, right? Like, I was a linebacker coach at an NFL team. So um, we had played Penn State uh, uh, earlier in, in a matchup. So I had made a, a wager with my linebacker from Penn State uh, that, that they had to wear a certain uh, school's colors if they won or lost, right? So uh, when we were actually getting ready to play, uh, uh, when Minnesota was playing, I believe, Iowa um, or whoever it was, I talked to Carter about it, and he was so emphatic about his, his time at Minnesota, and that really made a strong impression because I realized P.J. had made a huge effect on him. Um, what I see on the film now is a competitor in his league. I see a team that runs the ball efficiently. I see a team that stops the run. Uh, their quarterback is very uh, uh, um, in tune with what they're action shots, um, when they take those shots, uh, how they protect the quarterback. Uh, their receivers are very evenly distributed, so there's not really a standout go-to guy. Uh, there's just a lot of planning and processing. And then when we face them on the recruiting trail, they definitely have a plan that they follow and they execute uh, to get a certain type of player. And that, that's what I say when I mean that. Good stuff. And, and I, I know uh, six weeks until the early signing day, I believe, Brett, this is your first one as a head coach in early signing day. What do these six weeks mean for you guys as a staff as you kind of lead up to that? Yeah, that's a great point. So, um, you know, there's all kinds of numbers that come into play, right? So you have by the old rule, right, 25 initials. Um, but because we use some blue shirts in this class, that takes that number down a little bit. Um, now you have the new rule of the seven uh, that become available through transfers, right? So there's a little bit of a work in progress. Right now, we're at a number of high school kids committed to us that I feel very comfortable where we're at, but we're looking to add probably, you know, an additional five to six more players in that world, uh, especially on the defensive side. Um, uh, during, during during next week's bye week, uh, I've already got my schedule kind of laid out where I'm going to be next week, as well as our assistants uh, to maximize our 56 opportunities uh, before the actual time when we can get on the road after Thanksgiving. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's kind of a cool uh, process. And I think this early signing period, you know, when I took the job here, I missed, I, I was appointed on that Saturday. The signing date was on that Wednesday and they had signed already 14 players. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a little bit of calculation of who do you sign? Who do you fight for? Who might be hanging out there after the signing date? There's a, there's a lot of moving parts. And then, Pat and his staff have done a really good job of preparing for it. And then the transfer portal obviously brings a whole new venue to it as well. Thanks, Brent. Yeah. Coach, when you were a linebacker coach at Iowa, you were there for Kirk's first year, uh, 1999. Somewhat similar to this, you had a lot of close games, uh, you know, lost to, I think, Minnesota by four, and they were a ranked team. What is it about the first year that, you know, it just seems like there's a lot of first years for coaches where close games, trying to get over that hump is really difficult. Are there any parallels from that to this? You, you know, Robert, it's a great, uh, I would say, you know, I don't really look at it as that one season, right? I look at it kind of a, a accumulation of different things I've learned. Um, my, that, that was a transitional year. Um, um, I was a holdover from uh, Hayden staff with Chuck Long. We were the only two guys that were held over. Uh, so it was a new way for us to learn, right? I, I learned from Norm Parker, God rest his soul, who's no longer with us, that uh, I learned a lot of really good defensive football. Phil Parker, who's the D coordinator there now, was the DB coach. He and I were young bucks 
at the time together and kind of grew up uh, uh, at that time in our lives um, uh, with a new staff. Uh, I do think that first year we only won one game, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and uh, there were some close ones, but there were some ugly ones too. Um, uh, so I draw from a certain phase of it. Um, I, I think the, the, the number one, I don't really look into the, the close, not close. I look more into the execution and the understanding of what we're looking for. When we failed this year, right? Like it's very clear to me when we failed to get a W, it's really the ability to sustain winning football for four quarters or in Penn State's case, four quarters and beyond. But those four quarters, it, it's just the urgency and the, the, the awareness that every play matters. Like I think players that haven't won a great deal don't realize how much that concentration has to be there for four quarters. And, uh, you know, I've already had some preliminary discussions even during our first bye week with Tank and our crew about how we need to get that to go forward. Um, and that, that, you know, we've lost a number of close games that you referenced to, but I can really pinpoint when that game was lost and why, and that's the areas we're trying to attack um, more than anything. Thanks. Hey, Brett, on Monday, you made mention of just kind of how big of a pass that was from Brandon to Isaiah last Saturday. And, and, and listening, it's kind of a weird parallel, I guess, but in listening to the Manning cast on Monday, Peyton and Eli talked about how like one throw can, can really start to maybe get some of that moxie back a little bit for a quarterback. Have you seen that in A and Brandon or B in your time as a coach or a player where, where one throw or a couple throws really kind of lit a fire there? I have. Um, you know, as an assistant, you know, I, I kind of recall those moments. Um, I remember as a player, um, uh, there was a, the, a, a play in a, a game that uh, when I was uh, at, at the University of Iowa with Matt Rogers um, uh, to John Falloon, it had a huge uh, impact on my on my presence and awareness. Uh, and then as an assistant, as a a lot of times coaches are like, like when I was a young coach at Wisconsin, we had a rookie quarterback coming in and getting his first start. Um, and we really wanted to have some easy completions for him to get that to get that mo and it worked really like a charm right and we went on to win that game um and then in the nfl i've seen it literally like it, it, it's a connection with a receiver or more of a, a a concept that once a quarterback feels it and sees it he gets in that groove and it's hard to get him out of it um but we got to keep coming back to that well we gotta we gotta do those things over and over and um, like i said last week i wasn't surprised by the way bp played on saturday judged by what i saw Wednesday, Thursday, and especially on Friday. So uh, I'm excited to get to that period tomorrow and, and kind of see where I think BP's at. We had another really good day today. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to see where this thing can go. Thanks, Brad. Hey, Coach, I kind of wanted to ask you something similar to Bob in terms of the November games and what you're trying to build there. How do you go about building that understanding of, hey, these games now matter for not just currently, but the future of, understanding of how you're going to win these games to eventually play for a big 10 championship, or at least that's your goals. You, you know, simple thing, Alec, like, uh, so like when I got here, we talked about going into our winter program, how important, you know, every week is and, and week four is just as important as week eight, just as important in week, week 10. Um, when we got into spring ball, week one was important, but week five was very important, right? Like, and now we're in the middle of the season and, you know, we have guys maybe that have lost 15 pounds or we have a guy that's put on 15 pounds, right? Or a guy that we kind of stress, hey, you got to take care of your body on the front end of this season so you can be better prepared for the back end of that season. So there's all of these things that I've tried to tell these guys about, but now we make them aware of them, right? Like the only way you can learn is if you're aware and it, it, doesn't, it doesn't do you any good just to speak of it. And, and talk, they got to feel it. They got to understand it. They got to, they got to get it into their, their, their head um, by the proof of what they've seen, right. And what they've felt. And uh, there's some really good examples of that we're working through right now. There's some negative examples that I pointed out to our guys. Um, it, it's exciting because I think they're beginning to realize, Oh, that's what he was talking about. Right. Like I see what he's talking about now, but it's too late, right. We're in week. This is our seventh big 10 game, right. We got seven games going into this weekend, right? Six, this will be our seventh. We got two more after it. It doesn't do us any good to go back to the first week of, of winter conditioning and talk about the way you 
uh, approach the weight room, your, your diet, your nutrition, your sleep habits, it doesn't do any good to talk about that now, all right, because we talked about it back on the front end. So now there's just that much more awareness. And then the other, the other part is now these guys have lived it and, and they've felt it. So even though that, uh, you know, we got some good seniors walking out the door, some of these juniors now, they're like, oh, hell yeah, that's what coach was talking about. And they'll be a little bit more receptive to the, what we're doing. Um, uh, Cause I think they know where we've made progress as a football team. And uh, I'm excited to see where they go on Saturday. You mentioned there's some positive examples of them kind of understanding this and then some things that you kind of want to build on. Are you comfortable sharing any of those either positive or negative examples? Um, I, I think that, you know, you can see positives. Uh, um, I think negatives are always better left in private, right? Like, um, there's a great quote I always look at, praise loudly and criticize softly. Um, uh, obviously, you guys took a, a negative moment a couple of weeks ago and ran with it, so I, I don't think I want to go down that road uh, anymore. Uh, I, I think the part that, that as a head coach, like you constantly reinforce to your staff is let's really, really try to show why something good happens and the, the, the things that we want to build upon, let's make them understand and make them aware of it. Because a lot of times, guys are oblivious, right? And, and it's, it's just part of life, right? Like when you're young and you, you are consciously or subconsciously uh, not getting where, you, where, where someone wants you to go, a lot of times you're gonna fight, you're gonna resist, and you gotta show them why these things are happening. And, and that's the best thing we can do as coaches. Thanks coach, appreciate it. Yep. Coach, I got one more. Uh, do you like where the open week is? Do you kind of, I know you have no control, but do you kind of, is the timing pretty good for you guys? The, I, I'm sorry, Bob, what was it? The open week. Is it oh. timing for you guys? And how are you going to take advantage of what you were? Yeah, you know, so when, when this schedule came at me and we realized we were playing in week zero because of the Ireland trip, I was excited because it gave us two bye weeks. Um, uh, we've always uh, traditionally, uh, since I've taken over as a head coach, uh, we've done very, very well um, in bye weeks. Even, even when I was in uh, uh, at Arkansas, I thought we fared fairly. Reason what drove me next year to do the opening week zero again against Wyoming because I knew we'd get two bye weeks. I think bye weeks are beautiful, right? It allows you to take a, a moment to gather yourself, really develop your players. Uh, for us as coaches, um, bye weeks are completely different than game weeks, right? Like, um, you know the when you're into a game week, week after week, you kind of just get into this standard mode of operation. You know, I have recruiting set aside on a daily basis. I have football set aside. I have a uh, zoom call set aside and there's a plan for our coaches in the bye week You get to take a breath and really concentrate deep hold on what your roster is, what your roster needs to be, what you can attack in the recruiting world and still get good at X's and O's. And, and obviously we'll do a lot of prep on Iowa uh, during next week's bye week to get a little jump on them. So, yeah, I, I'm excited to get into that bye week and kind of see where we can take it. Thanks, Coach. Hey, Brett, when you're looking at the transfer portal, are there players that, for whatever reason, would not be eligible next year that you would uh, you would want to take a look at? And And I don't remember all the ins and outs of why that would be, but I think if they're transferring a second time, they might not be immediately um, eligible. Yeah. Yeah, there is, right? So right now there's just a one-time transfer, right? So um, even our players that, you know, anybody that tries to um, or, or wants to enter the transfer portal here, I just warn them, like, listen, the, you don't know where the NCAA is going to go with this stuff. If you've already transferred once, if you transfer twice, there's no guarantees that you're going to be given that opportunity. Um, uh, grad transfers are a little bit different deal. Uh, for me personally, never say never, but, like, if you're going to take a transfer – like to me, the, the, the value in that is for an immediate result, right? Like whether they, they play or not determines by what they do when they got here. But really to this point, I've never really taken anybody with the idea that, that, that they have to, that they're going to sit for a year. That, that doesn't make sense to me. Um, I love to, you know, high school recruiting development and all that goes into it. If we supplement our roster with a transfer more than likely, uh, you know, I have no intentions of ever taking somebody with the idea to sit for one. No, that, that, that wouldn't be in the realm of my, my thinking. Makes sense. But I wanted to see your thoughts. Yeah, The only thing, the only thing that possibly could ring true a little bit, I guess would be as if someone had an injury that might, you know, prolong their window um, and they have a red shirt available that if the player made enough sense and if there was ties, especially like I'm telling you, like if you're from Illinois, 
and you're somewhere else and you want to play here, door is open, right? Like if you can help us win, that that's an easy one. Um, you know, it's been in, it, it, one of the things that I do first thing anytime we're playing an opponent um, is we look at, you know, obviously them uh, from a, a personnel standpoint, but I circle every player that's from Illinois, right? And it's just been amazing to me uh, the amount of players that I've seen at other programs that we've competed against where they're the, you know, leading rusher or they're the leading tackler or they're a three-year starter or they're a, a prominent player at this position. Like those players jump out to me because I, it, it, it makes me know what we can gravitate to if we can, if we can own our state, right? Like that, that, that's one of the driving forces since I've been here is to own Illinois. And from what I've witnessed and what we're doing, I think we're trending in a, a very positive direction, but uh, the proof is in the pudding by all these players we're playing against who are doing great things at their respective schools. I give them all the credit and the schools for recruiting them, but that's the reason that I get excited about Illinois more than ever. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you very much. You guys travel safe, man. Thanks, Coach. Safe travels.